Hey everybody, today we are going to learn how to create school counseling classroom lessons without having a curriculum. So I'm going to teach you three different ways to do that. Before we get started, share your name and location in the chat. I always love to know where you all are watching from. So again, if you're just coming in, share your name and location in the chat. And we're going to be talking about three different ways to plan your classroom counseling lessons. So I'm going to share three strategies that I have used to create classroom counseling lessons without having a curriculum. So there's a lot of different ways to do that. So get your notebook, get your pen, your favorite beverage, and let's dive right on in. And I look forward to seeing you join in. Let's see who we have with us. Hey, Gift, here waiting for the time. Yes, yes, I believe you, uh, you were in my last live, so I'm glad to see you back. Anyone else, please share your name and location in the chat. Parts of Texas. Awesome. I'm in Houston, Harker Heights. I'm not sure where that is, but I would love to, to see later on. All right. So again, if you're just coming in, we're going to talk about three different ways to plan your classroom counseling lessons. I'm going to share three different strategies that I have used to create lessons. So these are our objectives today. One, we're going to create. We're going to learn how to create classroom counseling lessons efficiently without a curriculum or a program. Two, we're going to identify resources and tools to help use help us. This was us. Sorry, help us meet the needs of our students. And three, we're going to evaluate our effectiveness to ensure that we are meeting our students' needs. Hi, Sarah from Chandler, Arizona. Hi, that's awesome. And Christine from Queens, New York. Hey, how are y'all doing? All right, so if you're just coming again, if you're just coming in, we're going to talk about three different ways to plan your classroom counseling lessons. So I'm really excited to share this information with you all. So this is what we're going to talk about today. I'm going to do an introduction in just a moment. We shared our objectives. We're going to talk about three different things to consider before you start creating counseling lessons or classroom counseling lessons. We're going to talk about method number one, method number two, method number three. And then I'm going to share some tools and resources. And then we'll do a little Q&A. So just as if you're just coming in, we're talking about three different ways to class uh, plan your classroom counseling lessons without having a curriculum. If you're new, just coming in, share your name and location in the chat. So I do plan on sharing. If you want to share a question in the chat, I will be answering answering them as we go along if it relates to what we're talking about in the moment. If it doesn't, I'm going to save the questions for the end. So again, I will ask answer questions within the moment if they pertain to whatever slide or information we're talking about in the moment. But if not, I'm going to save those questions from the end. So again, thank y'all for coming in and we are ready to get started. Hi, my name is John Burnett and this is Counseling with Mr. B. If you are new here, I am a middle school counselor and I am from Memphis, Tennessee, but I currently live in Houston, Texas. So I've been an elementary school counselor, middle school, um, assistant principal, um, you name it, classroom teacher. I taught middle school Spanish for a little bit, and I am here to share the information that I have to help you be ready to, you know, work with your students in August or September or whenever you start. So this is my 12th year in education. I started this channel to help you all. So I noticed that in some of my Facebook groups that I'm a part of that many counselors newly hired are really, really nervous right now. Of course, you don't really know what to expect. And everybody doesn't have a, a, a awesome mentor like I had when I first started my first year. And so I would love to share my information and the things that I've learned over the years with you all. So sit tight. All right, so let's start. So here are the three things that we're gonna consider. We're gonna consider our mission and vision of our school. We're gonna look at needs assessments and our district expectations. Before we can create any classroom counseling lessons, you wanna take all of these things into consideration. So again, remember I told you, hope you got your notebook and your pen ready because I'm gonna talk about briefly why you need to consider these three things before we can start planning our classroom counseling lessons. It's super important. So if you are ready to start, drop in the chat, ready. And remember, if you have any questions, I am going to answer those in the moment if they pertain to the slide that we're on. If not, I will answer those questions at the end. All right, so first, let's talk, start with our mission and vision. So this is my current school's mission and vision. 
Our mission is to guarantee exceptional academic and social learning for all students. Our vision is for every student to be an amazing citizen, STEAM ready, and 21st century literate so that they can be T24 ready. And just so you know, T24 means technical school, two-year associate's degree, four-year degree. So we want our, our students to be ready for college and post-secondary needs. So I want you to take just a moment and let's talk about why it's important to plan our school counseling lessons along with our mission and vision. They have to align. So what keywords or phrases would you pick out from this mission and vision and drop it in the chat? What stands out to you? Yes, Sarah is ready. So what stands out to you? What keywords from this mission and vision? Keep in mind, this will help you create your school counseling uh, lessons, your classroom lessons. So for me, I'm, I would start with STEAM ready, T24. So that would mean that our school has a focus on college and career. And so my lessons, especially in the beginning, would align with, with that. So I want to talk about organization skills, learning how to uh, study, good study habits, um, setting goals. So if I'm thinking about my mission and vision and I look at my school's mission and vision and start creating lessons, I want to say, you know what? I know my school has a focus on STEAM and college and career, so I'm going to start creating lessons there. So I'm going to talk with about the like listening skills, organization, um, the importance of you know coming to school and being on time, college and career, exactly. So Tommy put academic and social learning for all students. Yes, 21st century literate. Yeah. So we uh, that's another point. So I want to talk about computer literacy and different things like safety, bullying, all those things would align with our mission and vision. So you want to keep that in mind when you're creating your lessons. The next thing, yeah, I don't know if you all seen this movie, Legally Blonde. It's one of my favorite movies. It's really good. But you know how she talks about, hey, going to law school, like it's hard. <laughs> so the next thing you want to consider is a needs assessment. So on a needs assessment, this is really important. Before you start creating lessons, you really want to tailor your lessons to what your students actually need. And so I really suggest that you send out a, news, a needs assessment around September or at least two weeks after school starts. So that way you've got a little bit of time with things settled down so teachers aren't already feeling overwhelmed with something you're asking them to do. So I wouldn't start like the immediately, like the first week, first day, sending out a needs assessment. I would wait just a little bit, again, just because you want to give things time to settle down. So in your needs assessment, you ask general questions about like what are the things that your students are needing? Like, for example, and you can do this a couple of different ways. You can send out a Google form. You can use SurveyMonkey. You can create your own or you can go on Teachers Pay Teachers and you can download a copy of some needs assessment. Or honestly, you can go on Google and type in needs assessment and you can get an idea of what questions that you have. So like number one, I listen and follow direct directions well at school and you have them rate how well they do that. I know how to set goals for myself this year. Have them rate that. I know my strengths and weaknesses. So those are just three sample questions that you can use to like kind of get a good idea of what your students need. I always talk about bullying. I always talk about how to handle um, like tough situations, coping skills. I ask those type of general questions in my needs assessments. And again, it's super important for you to take your needs assessment and then use that information to create your classroom counseling lessons. I wouldn't start, you can start with like a skeleton plan of what your, your lessons are gonna be about, but you're really, you really wanna refine your, your scope and sequence and your, your lessons based on your needs assessment. And the next thing and the final thing you wanna consider is your district's preset expectations. There are some things that your district has that are already set guidelines and deadlines that you have to follow. Like for us, for example, in around January or February, we do our four year plans for our eighth graders. So getting them ready to go to high school. So we sit down and create their schedules with them and all those things. That has to be done in January and February. So if I'm thinking about that timeline, those classroom counseling lessons are already set and I don't have to worry about that time period. So you always want to take in consideration your district's guidelines and what their things that they need. All right, so now that we have those things, those three things that we consider out of the way, let's dive into our first way of creating our classroom counseling lessons. 
you can start with characters traits. So what I would suggest you do, and I've done it this way too, when I didn't have a curriculum, this was a very simple way. So I started off with the easiest approach. You pick 12 character traits, one for each month of the year. You center your lessons around those character traits, or you could also use your school's model. Like for example, if you're a PBIS school and you already have like a behavior matrix, um, ours is SOAR. SOAR stands for safety, ownership, achievement, and respect. So if I were creating lessons, I would tailor those lessons around our school's model SOAR. Like for example, safety. If I wanted to start with safety lessons, I could do some lessons on bullying, um, using kind words, like all of those things. Um, so that will you can you can you can incorporate both of those actually. So you can look at your model and you can use character traits. So I'm going to give you an example. So these are 12 monthly character traits and definitions that I have used to create school counseling lessons. If you see here in September, September I usually start with respect, um, generally because we're just starting the school year, and so respect, showing high regard for authority, other people, self property and our country or our classroom. Treating others the way you want to be treated. Okay, so if you pick your character trait, let's say you do start with respect. That, you can actually now start creating lessons around that. The first thing you want to do is you want to get your resources. So you go and find your, um, your lesson plans or buy your school counseling uh, books. Like if you have an elementary, if you're an elementary school counselor, you can get books around those things. And you can tailor your lessons. Like for example, you can do some lessons on listening skills. You can do some lessons on like the golden rule, all of those things. And so you can tailor your lessons along with the monthly character trait. And there, with respect, there's so many different ways that you approach that. You can tell, you know, tolerance, diversity, all of that. But you start, you pick your monthly character trait and you create your lessons surrounding that. So I had a question. I think this does pertain to where we are. Do you send it to the teacher or complete to complete or to the students to assess themselves? OK, so that was the needs assessment question. I send it directly to my students. So the best way that I would recommend and this just works for me. I create a Google form. Very simple. I don't make it too long and complicated, but I send that form to the teachers and to the students like we use our um, we use a system that we call it's learning. Um, but now this year we're going to Canvas. So you'll send that uh, directly to all your students at your school, have them fill it out and just know that everybody's not going to fill it out. But as long as you have enough baseline data to create your counseling lessons, that's good enough. Good question. So going back to what we're talking about, our first way is creating monthly character traits. Again, you pick 12, center all your lessons around those character traits. So this is just a list of character traits that I've used over the course of my career as an elementary and a middle school counselor. And you can switch this up. You can pick whatever character trait you want to. This is just one that my district handed out to me many, many years ago, and I've used it ever since. And I kind of just switch things up if I need to. So that's skill number one. Number two, create weekly themes. Now, this one can get a little bit more complicated, but not by much. This is a, uh, these are five things that I created for a mental health awareness month. And I use them if I've wanted to create classroom counseling lessons, I've used this too. So you can do this by picking a day of the week. So Mindful Monday, Tip Tuesday, Wellness Wednesday, Thoughtful Thursday, Fun Friday. These are just themes and examples of themes. So then what you would do, like let's say on Monday, your lessons for your classrooms on Mondays could be around mindfulness, coping skills, meditation, emotion regulation, like all of those things. And then you can create lessons surrounding that. So that's just the framework for your lessons. Then you create, you find your resources to match that. Like for example, you can find some free resources on like coping skills. Um, there's this website, I think I'll, I'll drop it in the description section when I uh, post this video, but I believe it's coping skills for kids. I think that's it. And you can get free coping skills uh, like star breathing, square breathing, lazy eight breathing, and you can share those and you can create a lesson around that. And that's so simple to do. All right, the next one. So tip Tuesday, tip Tuesday, I kind of align with the character trait. So like if I pick the character trait for respect, I'll just do a lessons around that. So I'm incorporating 
both strategy one and strategy two at the same time. But you don't have to do it that way. This just comes with experience with me. So I would pick the easiest thing. Now, what I'm not telling you to do, you don't have to pick a th different day of the week and a different thing for every, all one of those, those days of the week. What you could do is just pick one or two and then focus there. Like, for example, if I wanted to just do a Wellness Wednesday lesson, Wellness Wednesday incorporates mental wellness, physical wellness, and so many other things. So I could create classroom counseling lessons around that. I can teach about like recess safety, um, like the importance of getting sleep, um, the importance of like putting your cell phone down before 30 minutes before you go to bed so that you can sleep well, like all of those things. And that's a really simple thing. And it's a very, very, you don't have to sit up there and create like long lesson plans. It doesn't really take a whole lot as long as you have a focus. And then for Thoughtful Thursday, I just shared like little quotes, memes, gifs, like different things like that. Now, one thing that I've used this for the weekly themes, if you do have a curriculum already that your school has purchased and you may think that, you know, sometimes it's not enough, you can create these as supplemental lessons. I run our school's Instagram. And so what I do for uh, for these, I'll create little mini lessons along with that. And so I'll share those out with our students. But again, this is a way that you can create classroom lessons just with this scope and sequence here. And then Fun Friday, I just share little jokes and different things, games and apps to help students. I'm going to pause and see if we have any questions. OK, I think we're good. So again, remember, you don't have to do all of these at once. What I would do is just pick one for like Mindful Monday or something like that. And you can create mindfulness lessons for actually for the whole month, really, because there's so many different things that you could use with that. All right. So that was tip one and tip two. Now let's move on to the last one. Tip three is creating a year at a glance. So these are a couple things you want to consider when you're creating your year at a glance. And I'm going to show you an example of this in just a moment. So you want to think back during your important dates, like your holidays and things like that, or due dates, your character traits. So if you choose uh, to incorporate skill number one, you can do one and three at the same time. Your programs and events and interventions that you're going to create for that month. You want to factor in holidays and district deadlines and expectations, what I talked about as far as like, you know, the four-year plans that you have to do for your uh, high school students or even fifth grade transition, all of that. So I'm going to I'm going to change the view for just a second so I can show you an example of a year at a glance. But before I do that question, do you use the same topics themes for each grade level? Yes, I do. So, for example, if my focus is respect, I use the same top like that same topic for all of my grade levels. But what you do is you kind of like tailor your lessons. So kindergarten lessons are going to look completely different than fifth grade lessons. But you can still use that overall theme of respect for your lessons. What you have to do, of course, you're going to have to like make it age appropriate and things like that. But that's just speaking for elementary. So I don't know if you're elementary, Sarah, but when I used to do that is I would create like a guideline for K through two and I would just kind of model it like and make it age appropriate. So it would be the same lesson that just add more age appropriate skills for my second graders that I didn't do for kindergarten. And then I would do a separate lesson for respect for three through five and again, tailor it more to the age appropriateness. But it's still the overall theme of respect. That's a good question. So let me change the view for a second, just so I can show you an example of a year at a glance. All right, so let me make sure y'all can see it. Okay, I'm gonna make it a little bigger too. I love the idea of sticking to the same topic, especially with large caseloads. Yes, yes, it helps because you don't have to uh, spend too much time like doing so much. The goal is to make it as simple as possible. This is uh, these are plans that I've used when I didn't have a counseling uh, curriculum that our district or our school purchased. So you have to do what may what's best for you and, you know, make it easy on yourself, especially if you're a brand new counselor. So let me make this a little bit bigger so y'all can see. OK, so I'm going to scroll down just a little bit. All right. So this is what I call a year to glance. This is uh, something that you can use as a planning document to like plan out your whole year. So what you do, again, you focus on, let me go back up, sorry, I'll scroll up, here we go. So you start with your important dates and your staff trainings. Like, let's look at September as an example. In September, I do a staff bullying, suicide, and child abuse training, but now I actually do it more like trauma and, and adverse childhood experiences, ACEs. 
So at the end, you know, it's during September, that's something that I share with my staff and I make sure that I do that training with them. Bullying lessons for students. So I make sure that those are done in September. Important dates. Remember, you want to put your important dates. This is where I li literally just list holidays and times that we're off just so I can make sure that I keep track of it. Um, you also want to look at like important events and things that need to be done. So I put here in August, you do needs assessment, but you can do them at the end of August or the beginning of September. It really doesn't matter. It really just depends on your school. So we've got important dates. We've got holidays we've included. We've got staff trainings that need to be done. And then he, these are the character traits that I meant, showed you before. So September's focus is respect. And I'm going to scroll down a little bit to October. October is responsibility. October is also a very, very heavy month for a lot of different activities. I actually love October. It's one of my favorites. Um, we do Red Ribbon Week. Fall break is in there. We also have like a fall carnival most times. Bullying Awareness Month. Hispanic Heritage Month is September 15th to October 15th. So again, this is a very heavy month with a lot of different things going on. So this planning document really, really helps you to like stay on track of things that are due. And it also helps you to kind of like create your scope and sequence for your classroom counseling lessons. And again, remember I talked about those district uh, expectations and guidelines. You also want to put that in here too. Like for example, let me scroll on a little bit down to February. And keep in mind, y'all, this is just a bare bones one. I haven't actually filled this one out for my, for my current school year. This is just a, a, a template. And of course, this will be a lot more fleshed out if I were actually doing it right now. But for February, we do our four-year plans for our high school for our eighth graders, getting them ready for high school. We also do our fifth grade transition. So we invite the fifth graders from our uh, neighboring schools, our feeder schools, to come in, get a glimpse of our programs and our events and things that go on in middle school, just kind of get them ready. So February, I know, is a lot. It's very, very busy. So I don't plan a whole lot of school counseling lessons in February just because we've got all those things going on. Okay. So now that's the uh, four-year plan, a year at a glance. If you would like a copy of this template, you can join my learning, uh, my Facebook group, The Learning Lab, and I'll share the, I'll put the link in the description below when I post this. But if you're not a member, you can go, um, it's really easy to just go log in, go to the file section, download your copy, and then you can edit it as you see fit. So now let me switch the view back over and go back to our presentation. Remember, if you have any questions, please drop them in the chat. OK, here we go. So we just talked about our year at a glance. We went over our weekly themes. And then we did our character traits. So these are three ways that you can create classroom counseling lessons without having a curriculum. Now, again, don't do all three because that just could be overwhelming. You pick what works best for you. And especially if you're a brand new counselor, start with the easiest thing. And to me, I'm not putting my views on y'all, but to me, the easiest thing for me was just creating character traits and make, making lessons along with that. So let me tell you why that was easier. One, it's easy to pick character traits. You just pick what you feel like your students are going to need. Then once you do that, you find resources, inexpensive or free, on Teachers Pay Teachers, and then you create your lessons on that. And if you're an elementary school counselor, if you already have a library of SEL books, that's perfect. Align that with that. But again, that's just to me just the easiest thing. All right. So now those are the three things. Now, let me give you some tips. Don't try to do everything all at once. So again, if you're a brand new counselor, it can be really, really overwhelming to plan out and try to come in the first day, the first week and do classroom lessons, do small groups, do all of the things that need to be done. I would advise you to wait just a little bit, at least until you hand out your needs assessment so you can figure out what you really, really need to focus on. So just start from the beginning. You can create like a little, you know, like a outline or a template that you can easily model again that year at a glance and you can add to it, you know, when you get your needs assessment data back. Another thing, consult your leadership team. So when you create your school counseling program, your classroom lessons, like all of those things, you really want to keep your school leadership involved and up to date. So, for example, like if you have a program that you want to do and it aligns with your, your scope and sequence, your year at a glance, but you haven't got your admin's approval, 
that's going to be really difficult to actually get buy-in and even plan. Like, for example, like if you want to plan something during the school day, like a speaker to come in for Red Ribbon Week, you really need to make sure you get your leadership team's approval. So I would suggest consulting them, even sharing a copy of your year at a glance with them and having a conversation with them when you plan anything involving the students and your families and even your staff. So make sure that they stay in the loop. What about sending needs assessments to teachers? Yes, I would suggest sending a needs assessment to teachers too, but here's the thing. If you're a brand new counselor, you can do that and just take it with a grain of salt. That's why I meant don't try to do everything all at once. For me, when I send teachers needs assessment, I ask them, what do you think the things that your students need the most? And so I take that information along with the student needs assessment and that's how I create my program. You don't have to do both. You can really just start with the students, but if you're teachers, you wanna get their input too, and you feel like they would especially like have a good uh, insight, then you can get that too. Another way that I use teacher needs assessment, I, I ask them what specific trainings or programs they feel would be beneficial for their professional growth. So if you're a school counselor and, you're an expect, and you are expected to do pre professional development for teachers, you can ask for their input. Like for example, I sent out a needs assessment and I asked the staff like, what are the things that they're struggling with? And they were telling me some of the things that they struggle with with classroom management, learning how to correct behaviors, things like that. And so I was like, well, hey, I can do a, you know, a PD, a little mini PD and offer some tips or even send out like articles or like little things that help them. That's a good question. And the last tip that I would think say is form a committee. So when you come in the door and you get comfortable, learn your staff and learn who are the people who are being willing to help you to plan out your events, your programs, your interventions, like all of those things. Like, again, I always go back to Red Ribbon Week because it's a heavy thing um, in October. You can plan that all by yourself as a school counselor, but it would be so much better if you got the input and your support of teachers or staff who are willing to form a committee with you or a school counseling advisory and, you know, delegate some of those tasks so it takes a little bit of focus off of you. So again, these are the three tips that I would suggest. Don't try to do everything at once. Consult your leadership team. Form a committee to help you out. And these are some of the tools that I would suggest. The National Education and Health Awareness States the new one just came out. So if you're not aware of this, um, there's a running document that has like all of the monthly themes, weekly themes, daily themes, and you can just plan your school counseling lessons and your events and all your programs along with that. So I'm gonna show you an example of that in just a moment. But it's very simple. You just go to Google and you type in ASCA awareness calendar, and then it's literally the first thing that pops up. Again, go to Google and search it. Don't go to Yahoo. I've tried this and Yahoo doesn't pop up. I don't know why. But if you go to Google, search for Ask an Awareness Calendar, it'll be the first link that pops up. And again, when I post this video, I'm going to drop a link, uh, uh, drop a link in the description section. You can also join my Facebook group, The Learning Lab. I also share, share resources that you can adapt, take for free, make them your own. And you can also look at Teachers Pay Teacher resources. So I would suggest like, taking a little bit of time and just finding some resources that you feel will be appropriate for your school. But again, you really want to focus on like what your needs assessment data is before you go out and buy a whole lot of stuff. But if you know you're going to need stuff for like anger management and things like that, then go right ahead because I'm pretty sure you'll probably use it. So this is a, an example of a monthly theme from the um, Ask, well, I always call it the Ask Awareness Calendar. It's really not the Ask. It's not from ASCA. It's the um, Educational Health and Awareness States. But I mean, ASCA puts it on their website. That's why I always call it the Ask Awareness Calendar. Before I go over that, I got two questions. Do you recommend scheduling a weekly, a regular weekly time for you and your principal to meet to discuss upcoming events or programs you like to plan? I do mine monthly and I just knock out all of them monthly, but you can do weekly. It depends on what your, your schedule, your admin is like, but I always do mine monthly. Like for example, October, when I'm planning October's events in September, I sit down with my school leadership team and I say, hey, this is my outline of things that I'm going to do for October. What are your thoughts? Do you do you think it's a good idea? Is there something that, you know, what, I, I, you know, I just ask them questions. How did you approach staff to establish a counselor and advisory committee? So I'll come back to that because I'm going to pin that, Sandra, because I'm going to go ahead and finish up and then I'll come back to that one. All right. So 
if you're looking at October, October is a heavy, heavy month for a lot of activities, as you can see. But it is an amazing thing to plan your events and interventions around these events with this awareness calendar. And it's for the whole school year. So they just published the new one for the 22-23 school year, and it's like available now. So I was like so happy when I saw that yesterday. So in October, these are the summer things that I have focused on in the month of October. Um, LGBT History Month. National Bullying Prevention Awareness Month. I've done Positive Attitude Month. Uh, let's see, what else? Unity Day, that's for bullying. Uh, so on Unity Day, we wear orange and we wear the same color and just like kind of make sure that we're all taking a stand to be united against bullying. So the, and then of course, Red Ribbon Week. And um, Hispanic Heritage Month is ending in, um, it's from September 15th to October 15th. I don't know why it's like within that date, I forget. But I also focus on that too in October. So as you can see, again, October has a lot of things that you can use to create lessons around. And those are just some of the things that I've done. There's so many other things here that will be really beneficial. So even with this, don't try to do everything at once. Pick the major things that you really, really want to focus on and then plan your lessons around that. Has anyone here seen this before? The uh, Again, I'm going to call it the ASCO awareness calendar. It's really the, mental, the educational and awareness states. It's really a really helpful tool for helping for planning your school counseling lessons. So now, those are the three ways. Just a quick recap. A quick recap was, let's go back. There's three ways that you can plan your counseling lessons without curriculum. One, if you pick your character traits for the year. And then you're playing your lessons centered around those character traits, which to me, again, is one of the easiest ways. Two is if you create weekly themes. And again, you don't have to do all every day, Monday through Friday, a week different theme. You can just really just focus on one and create a whole month worth of lessons around that. Like, again, I always go to Mindful Monday because that's one of the easiest ones to do because you can find so many mindfulness activities, coping skills, meditation, emotion regulation, feeling identification, all of that goes within Mind, Mindful Monday. You can plan lessons around that. This is just a template that'll help you. And then use your gear at a glance. And if you would like a copy of it, again, you can go to the Learning Lab on Facebook. It's my Facebook group that I created. Search the file section, download your free copy and start editing as you see fit. So those are the three different ways. All right, I have it bookmarked, awesome. All right, so now I'm going to ask questions or answer questions. I'm sorry. I was just looking at it the other day. Yes, the happy the new one is up. I was so happy too. I'm not sure when the new calendar comes out every year. I just know that it was posted. The newest one was posted just a couple of days ago. So you don't have to use the 20, oh, one, 21, 22 one. All right, where can this calendar be found? I looked on the Ask website and I couldn't find it. I wouldn't look on Ask. It is on Ask, but I don't know. What you do is go to Google. And in the search bar, type in ASCA Awareness Calendar, and it'll pop up the first uh, link. That's the easiest way that I do it. And then I save it on my desktop. Katrina, that's how you find it. The calendar is going to be a great resource tool. Thank you for sharing. All right, y'all. So that was it. If you have any other questions, this is how I plan my lessons, uh, especially without a curriculum. It doesn't have to be overwhelming. You find the thing that works best for you. And again, I'm going to say this one more time. I keep saying it, but I want y'all to know the monthly character trait is one of the easiest ways to plan your counseling lessons because you just pick whatever character trait you think your school needs to focus on. You find books, uh, SEL books or resources or even lesson plans that you can use to plan your lessons out throughout that. So this is um, the second training that I've done for the summer series. Again, I'm going to share some more. So the next one is going to be talking about new counselor expectations. So what should I expect as a brand new counselor coming in in August, the first week of school, couple days, month, all of that. So I'm going to share that one with you pretty soon. And then I have another one that I'm going to share, and that is trauma-informed schools, like how to create a trauma-sensitive classroom, along with resources that you can utilize to help your teachers, your staff, and your family. So those are the, the next two that are coming up. Then after that, I'm going to go again with the survey data that I got from the um, Instagram Live. You all gave me like 22 topics that you're interested in. And I'm going to share a poll and see what was the ones that are uh, most important. So in the meantime, 
I have plenty of other videos on my YouTube channel to help school counselors of all kinds, new, great, recently hired, veteran counselors, everybody. Again, my goal for starting this channel is to make sure that you all are set. So if you have any questions, you can always DM me on Instagram. But in the meantime, this is going to be a live um, that I'm going to share as a replay. So if you didn't get a chance to, if you want to go back and rewatch it or different parts, and I'm going to put timestamps in it too. So if you're going to just go to a specific part, feel free to do that. But for those who weren't able to join, I'm going to make sure that you all have the replay available. So thank you all for coming in. I'm going to check one more time to make sure we don't have any more questions. I think there was one that I missed. Let me make sure. Oh, Sandra, let me go back to your question. I'm sorry. I knew it was one question I needed to go. How do you approach staff to establish your counselor advisory and committee? All right. So this is what I do. I always, I send out, a, you can do this one of two ways, actually. You can literally go approach people. And like when you sit down and like have your conversations with them and say, hey, I'm planning some things um, for our school. Would you like to be a part of it? You can do that like verbally, like face to face. Or you can send out a survey, a very simple survey as part of your needs assessment, really, honestly, so you can knock out two birds with one stone, and ask teachers, would you be willing to join a committee? We'll meet once a month, and we'll just plan out activities and things like that. If you're interested, yes, and then you start planning from there. So you always tell them the reason why you're starting the committee. You talk about the benefits. You talk about, like, the things that you plan on doing for that committee, you know, to benefit the school, and then you give them that choice. So there's generally a good audience of teachers or staff who's going to contribute and help out because they really love the, the success and be able to, you know, help the school thrive. So I've never had a problem with finding a finding members from my advisory committees. It's just all about the ask. So good question. I think that was the last one I needed. OK, got a new question. What's your favorite part about being a counselor? My favorite part about being a school counselor is the flexibility and the adaptability of this role. So I'm a very creative person. I don't know if y'all see it, but like these presentations that I create for you all, I share the same ones for our students. So I will sit down and I will plan out my lessons and I'll create all of these like really cool presentations and make sure that my students have a lot of stuff that one, relate that they can relate to, and two, they make sure that their needs are met. So I love being able to like adapt things, be flexible, and be a role model to students and even staff and family. So like, I, I love my job. It's so different. Every single day you walk in the door and there's something different. And that could be good or bad, but it makes things interesting. You can't find the calendar. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually, when I post this video, I'm going to drop it in the description section below. Actually, since we're done with the training, I can really show you, but you really just go to Google, pull up a Google uh, window, in the search bar, type in ASCA awareness calendar, and then you'll post it and you'll see it. Let me see if I can share the link in the chat. I don't know if it'll work like this, but you can try and see if, if you can download the link. If not, like I said, go to Google, uh, type in the search bar, ASCA awareness calendar, and then it should be the first one. Yeah, yeah, it's really easy to find, Sarah. It should be like it's, it should be the first link that pops up once you find it. But again, if you can't find it, I'm going to post it in the description section when I post this video. What's the ideal amount of questions for your needs assessment? Actually, let me see. How many of the last one that I shared, if I can pull it up real quick, I can show you. I don't put a whole lot of questions, honestly, because I don't want the kids to be bored and I want them to answer it honestly. So let me show you. Give me just a second. I'm going to pull up one. And I can actually show you an example of one that I've used. So let me switch out the screen. Bear with me just a moment. That's a good question, Christine. All right. Um, is this it? Yeah, here it is. Hold on. Okay. So let me scroll down just so you can see. I have, I'm, I have one, two, three, ten. Uh, well, oh, okay. No, I didn't use all of these. I put a lot of this. Is, uh, this isn't a one that I like. This was my initial one. And I kind of scaled it down after this because on this one, I have 18 or nine. Yeah, I have 19 questions, but I definitely would not send that many. I usually stick around 10. 
And as you can see, um, our school is heavy. We have a heavy population of Hispanic students. So I put it in English and in Spanish to make sure that I get all the accurate data that I can. Awesome. All right. So that's it, y'all. I hope that you come back next week and you are a part of the new one, uh, the new presentation I'm going to share. We're going to talk about what to do as your first, you know, couple days, first couple weeks as a school counselor. So new counselor expectations. Another thing is if you're going to ASCA, please stop by and say hi to me. Um, I would love to get the chance to meet you. And if you're not going to ASCA, I am going to share like the whole experience. I'm going to share videos. I'm going to share like week, like updates and stuff like that when I go. So I'm going to Austin this weekend for ASCA 2022. And I'm really, really excited because it'd be my first one. All right. Y'all have a good night. And thank y'all.